What up, cousins? Guys, Anthony Jones with the Top Gun John Boat, and this is video number two of my DIY full electronics and my John Boat to Bass Boat conversion. Um, guys, in this video, we're going to go over how I've run my 8-gauge wire for my battery. I'm going to show you a kill switch, how I install the kill switch next to my battery to kill power to everything in the boat. I'm going to go over my crimps, my heat shrink wrap, my wiring, how I do my butt connectors, um, how I do all that good stuff. We're going to talk about the Blue Sea Systems, a uh, fuse box slash uh, negative bus bar combo. We're going to get into that. And then wiring up gain switches. And lastly, I'm going to show you... Um, basically a few test runs of how the overall system works. I'm going to try as best as I can to explain to you how the wiring system actually works using three pin gang switches. Also, there's a lot going on in this video. And honestly, I had so much footage. We're going to stretch it out to a video number three. So look for that to drop shortly after this video. And we'll wrap it up there. But man, there's a lot of, I feel like a lot of good content. As always, I went into detail. So I hope that it will help you guys out. And if you like what you see, you like the channel, if you're new to the channel, um, man, just simply subscribe. That is the best way uh, you can show your support. And if you missed video one, go back and take a look at video one because I go over the full uh, layout of this boat, how I wired everything up until this point. In this video, we're going to get right into it. Uh, that is all I got for you guys. Thank you so much for joining me. As always, may your tiny boat bills be great. I did go ahead and get all of my eight gauge wire um, roughed in, goes in there, goes through the boat, comes out here. I think I'm gonna go ahead and start by doing my, my connections to my battery. So I'm gonna do my terminal connections and then my positive lead is gonna feed into um, this kill switch that I got on Amazon. I'll leave the link to this in the description of the video, but uh, this is just going to kill power to the battery. It's a marine, gate, marine grade switch, and I'm going to mount it on this uh, custom bracket that I fabricated, and that's just going to get kind of going to go in here. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and uh, mount the bracket, and then wire in the switch, and then we'll pick it back up. All right, got the bracket mounted in, and I'm just going to go ahead and start snipping my eight gauge wire and wiring that into the switch. Now on this switch, what you're going to see is there's going to be these plastic parts on the side. They simply slide out and then that will give you access to run your wiring um, to tie this in. Your positive is just going to connect. And it's, it's basically just going inter to intercept the line feeding through. Um, but uh, what I'm going to do, you could just leave these out. Um, but what I've done is I've just simply taken my razor knife and I'm just notching. Uh, just cutting out a little notch for my 8-gauge wire to slide through. That way it just contains it a little bit better. Okay, so I've got my wire cut. I'm going to go ahead and strip it and attach my, um, my terminal connector. Now, here's the deal, man. When you order this, though, it came, with, it came with a really nice quality connection. But this is for bigger gauge wire. That's not going to work with my 8-gauge. So I, I went out and got these. Unfortunately, these aren't 10 uh, marine grade so uh, I think it's gonna be okay because I'm gonna use the uh, the shrink wrap um, around it and then also obviously coat it and the dielectric grease should prevent any corrosion so um, but you could order these as well online um, for the marine application but I'm just gonna go with these because this is what the auto zone down the street had just want to show you this real quick because uh, I'm not going to do this step by step throughout the entire wiring process and I've already done a lot of stuff in my boat, but I just want to take the opportunity to show you. I've stripped this wire, okay? Anything on my boat when I do wiring, and again, I'm not an expert. This is actually, I'm not very comfortable with this stuff. Uh, I'm, just, I'm just stripping just enough, see that? For whatever I'm using to slide over, all right? And it's just going to sit, it's just going to sit flush inside of there, okay? Then I'm going to obviously, I'm going to, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to slide my heat shrink wrap, okay, over my line. All right, you got to do that first. All right, slide it down over your, over your wire, put your connector, connector on, crimp it, slide your heat shrink wrap back over the connection, heat shrink wrap it tight, okay, and then whatever I connect it to, I'll go ahead and use my dielectric grease, all right, and I'll, that'll work out. Um, again, these are just what they had at, at AutoZone, so that's what I'm using. It'd be ideal to have a connector like this that's a marine grade 
but I feel that with the dielectric grease, this will be fine. This is going to be underneath underneath the housing and in a hatch. So, I mean, that's just what we're doing. But uh, that's just an example of how I do wiring in my boat. Um, again, before you crimp it, remember to put your heat shrink wrap up, up the line so you can slide it back over. If you forget about that, then you're not going to be able to get it over any of your connectors. Just a little tip and an FYI, um, I'm going to go ahead and hook this thing up. Before I tighten this thing down and lock it into place permanently, I just want to show you guys. All this is is a feed coming in, okay, and a feed going out. All right, and I'm about to uh, hit it with some grease, grease everything up. But it's a feed, feed coming in. It's going to come in from your positive of your battery, come in on one side, and then go out the other, and then go to wherever it's uh, going to run power to. In my case, a Blue Sea System fuse fuse box. And uh, this uh, this will turn and kill power. And uh, it actually is keyed. I can't do it with one hand, but this is removable. So you can kill power to your boat, remove the key, and then nobody can turn power back on without it. So it's a, also a unique feature. All greased up. And uh, I just want to show you guys, man, this stuff is awesome, dude. It's uh, in this little gun. And uh, you just take it and you adjust it. Like you spin this and you could do max or minimum. This is on max. So you just pull this trigger. And it just squeezes it. Look at that. It just shoots out. It's easy because it's got that tip and you can get it into the tight spots. Like where I'm at right now is perfect. So I just want to show you that because I'm real impressed with this stuff. Alrighty then. Switch is wired up. Just got my positive feed going into the battery terminal. Did some heat shrink wrap. Little rubber protector. Okay, same thing with the negative going around. I like to use these... Uh, these nylon wire clamps, got just an assortment of them, and uh, obviously the shrink shrink wrap tubing, and uh, that's it. That's it for that portion. So, uh, so technically now at this point I've got power to the back of the boat. So now I could really start getting into wiring all this good stuff up. Real quick, I'll show you how this uh, battery switch works. It's activated now, so it's in the on position. What I've done is uh, my wire that's leading back here, I've just tied it in to my blue LED underglow lights. And um, I'm just simply going to turn that off. That kills power. And uh, as you can see, lights are off now. Okay, still plugged together. Turn it back on. Lights are back on. So basically what that is, is this is going to be a battery kill switch, all right, right by the battery. You turn it off, it kills all power because this 8-gauge is going to come in and supply power to everything in the boat, all right? So it's just a safety measure, um, but that's it. And then if you turn it and turn it all the way around, this key actually comes out like so, and now it's locked in the off position, so you could take this with you um, if you don't want anybody messing with your setup. Okay, cousins, let me show you what we're working with here and what all we're going to wire up. Um, I've got nine gain switches, okay? I've got a voltmeter, a USB, and a live well timer, okay? So um, what we've got here is a panel that I made out of uh, very thin uh, plywood. Um, it's like the project panel, and uh, I believe it, it may be a quarter inch, okay? I've coated it in oil-based paint front and back. And then I've wrapped it in carbon fiber vinyl. Okay, so one of the first things I've got to do is I've got to kind of do, all right, see how these are all jumped together? So you've got your positives jumping, all right, from here to here and then out, okay? Now that you see this over here, it's the same thing. This setup came this way pre-wired, okay, for these three switches. And these came pre-wired for the USB port and that voltmeter. What I've got to do is I've got to create some uh, jumpers that are going to connect on all of these, all of my positives and all of my negatives, okay? And they're just going to simply jump from one to the other. Now, um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take, take my wire, take these, all right, tighten them up. Then, all right, before, before I add my female connector on the end, I'm going to take some of this heat shrink tubing. I'm going to slide it over both wires. All right, then I'm going to put my connector on, crimp it, 
and then I'm going to heat the tubing, or I'm sorry, slide it down over the connector and then heat the tubing. All right, so essentially, um, it'll pretty much look like this. I'll show you when I'm done. And uh, that's how it should look when I finish. So again, that's just two leads coming in. It goes into a female uh, connector, all right, crimped, and then covered in the heat shrink tubing, all right, heat it up, and it shrinks, and uh, it's all nice and tight and secure, and this also should protect it a little bit from uh, moisture, I guess, in theory, but um, I've got to repeat this process like a million times back here and jump all these. I just wanted to show you a demo one of them real quick to show you uh show you how i did it okay real quick i got this set up for demonstrative purposes and then also to make sure that i understand how the system works again i've never wired anything up so uh, this is more about me checking my bases and then kind of show you what you guys what i've got um basically i've got my my eight gauge wires coming out that are going to go to my uh, my fuse box um but uh, for now, I'm just testing. So I've got my 8-gauge wire for my positive and my 8-gauge wire for my negative. And then I've tied a negative uh, feed back into this rocker switch. And I've tied a positive feed back into this rocker switch. Okay? So let me show you how this rocker switch is working. It's a three-prong or three-tab. Okay? I've got my negative feed coming in, all right, to the top. Okay? I've got my power source coming into the middle. All right? I've just used this wire as a, for a test wire, so ignore, ignore all these jumpers. So I've got my power source coming into my middle, and I've got my accessory on the bottom, okay? In this case, this rocker switch, the accessory that it's controlling, is actually going to be a USB port and a voltmeter. I want those on a rocker switch. I don't want them activated all the time. So I've got my accessory wire jumped over to my positive accessory on my um, USB, over to my positive accessory on my voltmeter. I've got my negative on my voltmeter jumped over to my negative on my USB, jumped over to my negative prong, okay, on my rocker switch, then jumped over to my negative that will eventually be a negative on a bus bar. And then again, this positive source coming in, this power source, this middle, that wire is tied into my wire that will eventually, instead of being tied in, it'll be tied into a fuse, okay, on my um, fuse box. So basically how this works is you just hit the switch, Voltmeter comes on, tells you the power on the battery, shows you uh, USB is illuminated, it's got power, charge a phone, or uh, if you're out in the water and want to see what the battery is doing, hit the switch, turn it off, light on the switch goes off, voltmeter power is off, USB power is off, on, off, okay? Um, some guys wire these up to be on all the time, I just, uh, I just chose not to do it that way, just conserve uh, every little bit of power. So now all I've got to do is this process that I've just showed you that this rocker switch controls this one accessory. I've got to repeat that process um, for every switch on the back of this panel to control the entire boat. Uh, it's going to look confusing. It's going to look uh, like a lot's going on. But honestly, when you break it down like I just did for that one switch controlling that one accessory, it's going to be the same process for everything. So um, as long as you understand the basics of how that works, uh, I think you'll be okay. Okay, so what I've done here is on my on my neutral wires, which is my I guess my negatives coming in, I've just uh, piggyback all of those together, and then they're going to go out and feed into one wire going back to my negative bus bar, and then um, all of my negatives coming off of my actual accessories like my bilge pump, my live well, anything in the boat that's got power, that those negatives will go to the bus bar as well. This is just to where this has one wire coming in instead of having like 20 different wires coming out. For this, I can jump these. All right, but remember for, we got a positive coming in and a positive going out. So, so for this USB and voltmeter, for example, that's the accessory plugged into the switch. Then I'm gonna have this middle prong, the wire is gonna come out and it's gonna go to my fuse box and be fused. Okay, so I could repeat the process with all of these. So say this is for a bilge pump. Okay, what I'll, on this bottom prong, I'll attach the positive lead coming from the bilge front to this bottom prong. And then on this top prong, I'll feed that back to my fuse box and it will be fused. 
And um, remember, I've got that 8-gauge wire coming from my battery providing power to the fuse box. So all I'm doing is just really completing a circuit. Um, I hope that makes sense. Uh, sometimes I don't even know if I'm making sense to myself, but uh, this is kind of where I'm at. Okay, I've set this up to kind of give you another demo of how this actually works. Okay, so what I've got is on this switch here, this middle one, um, I've attached this directly to my positive power. That would be my positive in on the switch. This will be fused. Okay, so if you envision this wire going to fuse box, okay, then I have a 5 amp fuse, and then it comes off, and then it goes into the switch. Okay, I've got my negatives. All my negatives are jumped. Okay, so I've got my negative jumped in and tied in over here. It's tied into what would represent a negative bus bar. Okay, so I would have the negatives from the switch going to the bus bar. And then this wire here is the negative coming from the accessory that I'm going to about, about to test, which is a live oil light. And then this here is the negative coming from the battery going into the bus bar. That's what that simulates. Okay, so essentially what we got with this three prong, okay, we've got our positives and our negative. And then we've got our bottom prong, which are, is our accessory. I'm simply going to attack, uh, tap the accessory. Live oil light lights up. I removed it. Tapping the prong. Lights back up. And uh, that is just a little demo of how the system actually works with the three pin switches. What I'm doing here is I'm simply, I've got some uh, some lines coming in from the front that are for my, for my blue LEDs. I've got lines coming in from the rear for my, for my blue LEDs, so I've got to do two into one, and then that one feed is going to go into my switch. So I just want to show you guys real quick. I'm just using these connectors. I've got two going into one, and I'm crimping it. And then I'm taking two different sizes heat shrink wrap, and I'm just overlapping my connection, and I'm sliding this one, and this one will go under that one like that, and I'll just heat it up, and I'm using male-female connectors. I'll take another connector, a female, tie it onto this line, repeat the process, and then plug it into this. And that's how I'm tying two lines into one to feed into my switch to power up my blue LED lights. Um, I think that's the only thing in the boat that's actually got to go two to one. Um, could be wrong, but uh, mostly everything is individual, like bilge pumps, live well fills, things of that nature. But I just want to show you that. All right, got the female side wired up. Got that heat shrink wrap. This is going to go directly to my switch. Got my two to one here. All right, there's my male. Okay, what I'm going to do here is see how there's air gap in there. I'm going to take some of this dielectric grease. I'm just going to squirt some in there. And then I'm going to attach this to this. All right, and that dielectric grease is non-hardening, non-conductive. All it's going to do is uh, it's just another precaution uh, to prevent corrosion and moisture um, getting in there and corroding out that connector. Um, I'm going to do all of these and the dielectric grease as well. Anywhere there's a connection, metal on metal, in this boat, I'm going to be using the dielectric grease um, on that connection. And this is another example. I realized that in my rear hashes, I have stow lights throughout and then I have a live well light. I was going to run my live well light on an individual switch and I just realized that that's just silly. So I'm going to uh, tie my rear stow lights into my live oil light. So you'll see here, I've just got my two, two powers coming out from my stow lights is one and my live oil light is another. And instead of using the male female connector, I just used a uh, crimp connector and then obviously uh, heat wrapped around the connections. So that's another way. So that's a two to one connection. And this is going to be a permanent connection. I did these with a male female in case I ever needed to remove them and uh, just trying to think ahead because that setup may change. This will be permanent. Um, so that's just another another example of how to do it. Now these are 14 gauge wires coming in and 14 going out. But if you have maybe 16 coming in, two 16s, you might want to drop it down to 14. But uh, I feel just because they're um, very low amp draw LED lights, 14 is already overkill. Um, so I did not drop my wire diameter down, but, uh, just depends on what you're doing. You might want to, if you're going to two to one to drop that diameter down to, uh, something that can, uh, provide it the necessary power.
That's it, guys. I hate to cut this short on you, but uh, I've got a lot more content, so we're just going to wrap it up in a video number three. Uh, thank you so much for joining me. Um, leave a comment. Let me know if uh, I came across and actually explained stuff. This was the hardest thing to date that I filmed. I'm just really trying to dumb it down and explain what I'm doing as best as I can, so I hope it's not too confusing. Just trying to simplify it, guys, because uh, honestly, this, this project gave me some headaches. Everything else, the fabrication and uh, just outlining the projects, the scope of work inside the Top Gun John Boat, kind of natural for me um, because I like to build, I like to create and fabricate, but this part is just a different planet. So I hope you enjoyed it. Stay tuned. I will post the next video shortly, so keep an eye out for that on part three. We'll wrap it up. Thank you guys. May your tiny boat builds be great.